Hello everyone and welcome to our ICD-10-CM lecture on coding injuries and burns or chapter 19 of the ICD-10-CM coding manual. Some common injuries that you will see as a coder are fractures, dislocations, sprains and strains, intracranial injuries and open wounds and the codes for these will range between the characters S00 through T14.9. Now let's look at the injury coding guidelines. Most of the codes from chapter 19 are going to have a seventh character. So make sure and you always verify your code in the tabular list and look for that seventh character. So our seventh character choices are A, D, or S. A is for initial encounter and it's used for each encounter where the patient is receiving active treatment for the condition. D is subsequent encounter, and it's used for encounters after the patient has completed active treatment of the condition and is receiving routine care for the condition during healing or during the recovery phase. When the seventh character indicates subsequent care, we do not use a Z code for after care of injury as well. And then S is for sequela. Sequela is when a complication has arose from a direct result of that injury. So when you're coding the seventh character of sequela, you code both the injury that caused the sequela and the sequela itself, putting the seventh character of S on the injury code to show that the injury now has a sequela. And our sequencing rules tell us we put the sequela code first and then the injury that caused the sequela second. The coding guidelines also tell us if there are multiple injuries, we assign a code for each injury unless a combination code is available. Codes from T07, the unspecified multiple injuries, should not be coded unless the coder cannot find a more specific code available. Some of the other coding guidelines tell us to code the most severe injury. So what that means is we do not code a superficial injury like an abrasion or contusion at the same site we're coding a more severe injury like a laceration a fracture because the superficial injury is inherent in the more severe injury if they're located again at the same site. Fractures, just like with injuries, when we're coding multiple fractures, you want to be as specific as possible and code each one separately. If the documentation does not specify if a fracture is open or closed, then the unspecified code or the default code for the coder will be to code that fracture as closed. If the documentation does not state if a fracture is displaced or non-displaced, the coding guidelines tell us to code as displaced. Traumatic fractures we code from the injury section, chapter 19, but pathological fractures are not coded in this section. They're coded from chapter 23 with M codes. Now when we're coding fractures, there, <clears throat> there are a lot of seventh characters. You want to, again, make sure and review these in the tabular and make sure you're selecting the correct seventh character. Characters A through C for a fracture or for the initial fracture care. D through H and J through R are for subsequent. Seventh characters B, C, E, F, H through J, M, N, Q, and R distinguish that it's an open fracture. And characters A, D, J, K, and P distinguish it's a closed fracture. Seventh characters D through F are for routine healing, J through G are for a non-union, and K through N are for a malunion. And sequencing rules for coding multiple fractures or multiple injuries are that we put, put the most severe injury or most severe fracture first. Now let's do a practice case. 
So in this example, we have a 17-year-old with a compound fracture, type 2, of his left tibia shaft and left fibula shaft. So what code or codes are we going to assign? Well, we're going to code for a tibia fracture and a fibula fracture, right? So first, let's go open up our ICD-10 CM book. We're going to go to F to fracture. Once you get to fracture, you're going to go to tibia. And then you're going to see shaft in parentheses. That gives us code S82.20 with a hyphen. Remember, the hyphen means that we need an additional character. So now you always verify in the tabular, right? We're going to flip to the tabular section to S82.20. Once we get there, we see that we need a 2 in our 7th or 6th spot for the left extremity, right? Because it was the left. And then our 7th character, we're going to do B for initial, and then it's a type 2 fracture. So that's where we're getting our seventh character B. So our first code is S82.202B. Now we need to code the second fracture, which is the fibula fracture. So go back to F in your index to fracture, then to fibula. You'll see the default for shaft there in parentheses. And beside that, you see S82.40 with the hyphen. Again, go to the tabular to S82.40. We'll see our sixth character is going to be 2 for the left side. And then our seventh character, again, will be B. So our code for this one is the S82.402B. So again, we have two codes one for each fracture. Now let's talk about coding burns. When we're coding burns, these codes will range between T20 and T32. And there's quite a few guidelines. So when we're coding burns, we have typically at least three codes. We have one for the depth, one for the anatomical site. So the depth is like first degree, second degree, third degree, right? Anatomical site is where on the body the burn occurred. And then we have one for the extent of the burn, meaning how much of the body percentage-wise was burned. And then we also have one for the agent that caused the burn. I'll have a lecture to go over external cause codes later. We will not cover external cause coding in this lecture because we won't have time. But you would also want to code the external cause explaining how the burn happened. So when looking at the depth, this is how severe the burn is. Again, is it a first degree burn, second degree burn, third degree burn? When you have multiple burns of different severity, the coding guidelines tell us if these multiple burns of different severities are at the same site, the same anatomical location, you only code the most severe. So for example, if you have a first degree burn of the trunk and a second degree burn of the trunk, you only code the second degree burn. Again, it's inherent that the patient had to have a first degree burn initially to get to a second degree burn, right? Second degree is worse. So you don't code the first degree. It's inherent. It was at first degree at some point to develop to second degree. Now, the extent code explains the total body area burned, and we use what's called the rules of nine to determine the body area. And then again, the extent is rules of nine and it's in percentages, like zero to 10%, 10 to 20. And then the external cause explains how that injury happened, how that burn happened. So the sequencing for burns, just like our injuries, is we code the highest burn first. If you're coding multiple burns, you put the most severe burn first. If you have a non-healing burn, we code this as an acute burn. If you have an infected burn, we code the burn plus an additional code for the infection. When coding multiple burns, you want to assign separate codes for each burn. Again, as long as they're not part of the same site, different severity. 
But if you have multiple burns of different sites, regardless of the severity, you want to code each one specifically, just like with fractures and injuries. Try to stay away from a burn of multiple sites or a injury of multiple sites or fractures of multiple sites. In coding, we want to tell a story. So be as specific as possible. Don't code a burn of multiple sites unless your documentation does not tell you where specifically the burns are located. And if that's the case, most coders would query the physician for additional information. And then the rules of nine, we have categories T31 and T21, and head and neck are each 9%, each arm is 9%, each leg is 18%, the trunk anteriorly, so the front is 18%, the back posterior trunk is 18%, and then the genitalia is 1% is how the rule of nine works. Now let's go to a coding practice. So in this scenario, we have a first degree and second degree patient with burns on the thumb and two fingers on the right hand. So what codes do we assign? So the site of the burns, right, that's where the burn is located, is the thumb and the fingers. And because we have first degree and second degree at the same anatomical site, we only code the more severe, right? So we're only going to code the second degree because the first degree is inherent. So open up your index and go to B to burn. Once you get to burn, we're going to go to finger with thumb. And then we select right because it's on the right hand. From there, we're going to pick second degree and we get T23.241. We then, of course, verify this in the tabular, and we know we need a seventh character. So once you get to T23.241 in the tabular, we look at the characters for seventh characters. We know we need an A because this was the initial encounter for our burn. So we would assign an A, and then we also need to assign the extent which is going to be less than 10% because it was just the hand. So go to burn in your index and under burn, go to extent, go to east, and then you'll see T31.0. So now we verify these in the tabular. And in, in a real situation, again, we would code the external cause for the agent, the, the way the burn happened, and, but we haven't discussed those yet, so we'll get to external cause codes later, and you'll learn how, how to actually add that code on as well. But for right now, our two codes are T23.241A and T31.0.